success is very hard to handle, and then failure is even harder. I certainly had self-confidence. Hollywood's a very weird place. And action! Hello and welcome to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us tonight as we continue with the second half of tonight's Peter Bogdanovich double feature, all from our makeshift studio here in Hollywood. We're bringing you Peter Bogdanovich movies this month as we prepare to launch TCM's first podcast, The Plot Thickens, on April 28th. I'm the host. I'm proud of the work we've done. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Season one's title is I'm Still Peter Bogdanovich. The spine of the podcast is 15 hours of interviews I did with Peter in a small studio in Burbank over the past few months. During the late 1960s into the 70s, the top filmmakers of the new Hollywood began to dominate the cinematic universe in the United States. Instead of the power resting with the studios, with MGM, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Columbia, and Universal, the real power in town belonged to the directors, with Scorsese, Spielberg, Coppola, Lucas, Friedkin, Lumet, Jewison, and Bogdanovich. After getting some critical praise for his skillfully made low-budget debut, Targets, Peter Bogdanovich tore into the 1970s with three straight hits in three years, The Last Picture Show in 1971, What's Up Doc in 72, and Paper Moon in 73. But then came the flops and some shockingly bad press. Hollywood seemed to delight in Peter's failure. At the end of the decade, it felt as if he'd turned the corner and was perhaps on his way back up. But then the next year, a violent tragedy left him emotionally devastated and financially ruined. The woman he loved was murdered by her estranged husband as she was seeking a divorce. Our podcast is Peter's story, all of it, the good, the bad, the funny. Peter is funny, and he's funniest when he's telling stories about the biggest names in the history of classic Hollywood. It's Jimmy Stewart, John Ford, John Wayne, Cary Grant, Alfred Hitchcock, and Orson Welles. He knew them all, he liked them all, and they liked Peter, probably because they recognized there's no one like Peter. He is a living link to classic Hollywood. He even does impressions of them. I don't think he means to do it anymore, but when he starts telling a Hitchcock story, he starts doing Hitchcock. Up next tonight, we have the third of those three critical and box office successes, Paper Moon, a road picture with Ryan O'Neill as a Depression-era grifter and his daughter, Tatum O'Neill, as his protege, a protege he has no interest in mentoring. In the podcast, you'll hear Peter tell such wonderful stories about Paper Moon, about casting Tatum O'Neill, and about the challenges of working with Tatum O'Neill. She was just eight years old when she got the part. He'll also talk about shooting the picture in black and white and about the name of the movie. Here's an excerpt from the podcast where Peter details how he convinced the studio to change the title from Addie Prey, that was the name of the best-selling book the movie is based on. The first voice you'll hear is Peter's, describing how he listened to songs from the era in a desperate attempt to find a better title. So I'm looking at the list of songs that were popular in the early 30s, and one of them was It's Only a Paper Moon. I like the sound of the paper moon. Those two words jumped out at me. I played the song, and the song worked in terms of the relationship. It's only a paper moon, or whatever the line is. Uh, it's only a canvas sky. It's a great song. Those lyrics, it's only a paper moon, jumped out at him as a perfect solution. So he went to see Frank Yablons, who ran Paramount. I said, Frank, what about calling the picture Paper Moon? No, no, no. Addie Prey was a big bestseller. I said, how many copies did it sell in hardcover? About 100,000. I said, oh, boy, if we had 100,000 people to see our movie, we'd really have a big hit. All right, look, let's not have an argument now. We're calling it Addie Prey, and that's it. Peter, no surprise, couldn't let it go. He called in reinforcements. So I called Orson, who was in Rome, cutting a picture, cutting something. And I said, uh, Orson, you got a minute? No, I'm cutting. What do you want? I said, um, what do you think of this title? Paper Moon. It was a short pause. Then he said, that title is so good, you don't even need to make the picture. Just release the title. Orson's advice notwithstanding, Peter did release the picture, and of course, he got the title he wanted. Our podcast with Peter Bogdanovich, The Plot Thickens, drops Tuesday, April 28th. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
And stick around after the movie, Peter will be here to lend his insights to Paper Moon. Here's the film from 1973, also with Madeline Kahn. It's Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill in Paper Moon. Welcome back, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Joining me to discuss Paper Moon is the film's director. It's also the focus of TCM's new podcast, The Plot Thickens. Premieres April 28th, available wherever you get your podcasts. Peter Bogdanovich. Peter, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here again. So, Peter, I know from uh, discussing the film with you at length uh, on the podcast that Tatum O'Neill, uh, eight years old when she auditions, and she's so spectacularly wonderful in the film, uh, uh, getting there uh, was not an easy process, correct? Well, it, it took a little bit of doing. She was eight, had never acted, and she didn't audition. What ha actually happened was we were trying to figure out how to, how to, what, what to do with this project. And um, Polly Platt, who I had been married to, we were divorced, but we still worked together on Doc and, and Paper Moon. Uh, I asked her if she'd read the script, and she said, yeah. And she said, I think I know who could play it. I said, who? And she said, Tatum O'Neill. I said, oh, really? I had met her briefly, and I didn't hardly remember her. And so I called Ryan. And I said, listen, I'm thinking of using you and Tatum in a movie. And I want to come down and see Tatum in, on the beach. And because Brian was living on the beach. And I said, but I don't tell her that I'm coming to see her for a picture. And I knew he would. So <laughs> when, I went to the, when I went down there to, to the beach, to Santa Monica, Ryan says to me, hey, you're looking good. Uh, why don't you want to come out here and run on the beach and work out? And Tatum says, I, first thing she says, Oh, Dad, he's not the type with that deep voice. <laughs> and I looked at her, I said, why do you say that, Tatum? Oh, I don't know, you, you, you always wear your shoes and your shirt, and it's not your thing. And I looked at Ryan, I said, she'll do. And that's how she got the part. Uh, she was correct, right? You were, you, you, I'm going to guess. Correct, she was absolutely correct. But how she knew that, I don't know. Have you ever been to a gym? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, good. I, I actually, I worked out quite a bit. Um, but she, at that time, I didn't. So she was right. And you molded her performance into a, a Best Supporting Actress Academy Award. Yeah. She went up against Madeline Kahn, who should have got it, and Tatum should have got Best Actress, but they weren't going to give Best Actress to a nine-year-old. <laughs> you know, I guess uh, that was a bit much. Madeline Kahn, you made her feature film debut in in the picture you made before. What, what's up, Doc? You must have seen something yeah. special in her. Well, I went to New York to do a little casting on Doc, and uh, she was doing a play, which I didn't see, with Danny Kaye called Two by Two, and the, the casting woman at Warner Brothers had her come in to meet me, and uh, she hadn't done a movie. She didn't read for me. I said, let's just talk, and we talked. And she made me laugh. And I said, what are you laughing at? I said, you're funny. She says, I am. She didn't know she was funny. And she made me laugh a lot of times. And I thought, OK, I'll give her the part. But she, she just said, uh, Howard, and everybody laughed, you know? <laughs> Howard. And um, we introduced her in that movie. And she did very well. I, mean, I remember we had a reading of the script, first day of rehearsal. Every time Madeline said anything, the whole cast laughed. Howard, everybody break up. They didn't laugh at anything Barbara said ever in the whole script, <laughs> which is not uncommon. Right. Reading. I, she, I went into her trailer. She was saying, I'm an extra in this picture. I'm an extra in this picture. I said, Barbara, come on. You're the star. And she's wonderful in the picture. I love her in the picture. But Madeline was definitely competition. Peter, thanks very much. My pleasure, Ben. Good to see you always. Our podcast with Peter, The Plot Thickens, will be available April 28th. You can get it on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And Peter will return next Saturday night to co-host another double feature, this time helping us with a home edition of the TCM Classic Film Festival. Peter will co-host Casablanca and The Magnificent Ambersons with me. Stay with us tonight, though, because up next, Eddie Muller will be here with this week's edition of Noir Alley.